So what I want to share with you guys today is something the Lord told me I need to share. And it's something I had shared a couple of weeks ago at harvest time on a Tuesday night. And as I was just praying for this week, the Lord said, you need to share that message. And speaking of that, wow, Tuesday night after our softball time is going to be at the Keyport Waterfront ministering with Harvest Time. She's going to give a devotional. So pray for him and come out and support him afterwards if you want to and can. So we're excited that Rob is stepping out in faith and doing those things. If you have your Bibles, we're in John 9, 10, 9 and 10. John 10, 9 and 10. So Holy Spirit, we thank you. We ask you to literally break open the floodgates of heaven even wider than they've been this morning. We're asking that you do a new thing in each one of us right now. We need a breakthrough, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, yeah. And the Lord told me this is kind of a, a preparatory work or a setup for what he's going to do next week in, with the healing time. But John 10, 9 to 10 says this, I am the door. And in some versions it may say gate. And that's important and we'll talk about that. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you may have life, not only life, and that you may have it, your life, this life I give, more abundantly. That's powerful. I'm going to break that down real quick here. Let's think for a second. What is a door or a gate? Something you go in and out of, right? Transition. Transition, that's right. It's a place you go in to find safety when you walk in your house. You're guess, leaving the world. You're going into your, quote, sanctuary. It's also a place where you receive protection. You shut the door for your protection, for your privacy. For that place where you can recover emotionally, mentally, spiritually, however way. But it's also, what do you do within that door? When you walk in your house in that door, you recover, you gear up, you prepare to go back out again. Right? Nobody goes in a door and stays in the door the rest of their lives. They go in the door, get what they need, get geared up, whatever they need to do to go back out there again. So how does that relate to Jesus? Well, this word door or gate in Greek literally means a place to meet. So we're meeting Jesus. It's an opportunity. Another definition is opportunity. So it's an opportunity to encounter Jesus. Because he says, I am the door. You got to go through me, right? It's also, it's an entrance, and it's another definition is gate, literally a gate. He is the gate. Well, let's talk about this word gate or door for a second. In every city, the most important part of the city in the Old Testament and the New Testament is the gates of the city. Everything important pretty much happens at the gate of the city. So keep that in mind when Jesus says, I am the door, I am the gate. Everything important happens where I am. Okay? Everything important happens. Well, what happens at the city gates? The city gates were a place where the marketplace was located. So you buy and sell. You exchange, you receive and you give at the city gates. It was also the center of life of the city. It was the meeting place. Through Jesus, you encounter things. You encounter, you meet. They functioned as a center of public life where it was a place for meeting and for assembling. 
So everything that's important that needed to be discussed or even fellowship was at the city gate. If it wasn't in your home, it was at the city gate. And who's, who's the gate or the door? Jesus. So when we come together, who needs to be the gate, the place of meeting, the place we enter in? Jesus. Where we go to meet even unsafe people. Who do we need to enter to do this with a kingdom mindset? Jesus. Jesus. He is the door. It was all, okay, the gate of the city was also a podium for the Israelite prophets of old. It was where people went to hear the prophets speak. So the word of God was being released at the city gates. You know what was also happening at the city gates? Judgment took place. Judgment and mercy. If I had a legal issue with you, well, you went to the city gates where the elders of the city were, where the public officials were, where legal judgments and ordinances were established. We go to Jesus to establish legal ordinances, his principles, his judgment, his mercy. Remember, God's judgment, Jesus' judgment is justice and mercy. Judgment's to come eventually. But right now, where Jesus is, there's justice, heavenly justice, not earthly justice, and heavenly mercy and grace where Jesus is. That opportunity to receive that wonderful, blessed, loving grace, right? Deals were done at the city gate. If I was going to buy your business, i go to the city gate. Again, it was a legal exchange. In Jesus, deals are done. You know what's the best deal in the world in Jesus? That deal where he said, by my blood, you are, you are saved and you are free. Okay? That perfect exchange. I am buying you with my purchase of my blood. It's done. I am the door. I am the gate. Listen to this, Psalm 104, you guys know the song. Used to sing it, Maranatha song. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, enter his courts with praise. Psalm 104 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. You know, we always talk about, and when we sing that song, it's about how we enter his presence. We forget that it's about entering his gates through Jesus to get into the presence of the Father. Right? I am the door to get to the to where my Father is, to get into my throne room, to get into my presence. I am the door. I am the gate. We enter his gates that lead into his courts, kind of set up just like the temple. You enter the gates and you and then you have the courts of the of the women, the courts of the men, the courts of the priests, and so forth. Well, Jesus tore down that veil, and you enter his gates, you enter his courts, but you're in the court of his high, of his throne room. Right? He got he bypassed all that other court stuff. You enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. And remember, why does um, David write entering his gates? Because David was being chased by Saul. He was under turmoil emotional stress and turmoil. And he says, you know what? How do I get recentered to where I need to be to be in the presence of God? I need to have a thankful heart and a heart of praise. Because he is enthroned on the praises of Israel. That's his word, right? So I enter his gates. I I come to the press. I go through Jesus giving glory to God. In my portion, in my praise, in my adoration of what he has done through the Son. Okay? So in recognizing Jesus is the door, very important things are transpiring at the gate in Jesus. There are spiritual business dealings that are taking place that are life-changing and keys to the future, to our future. Every day we go through his gate 
go through him as the gate. He is doing spiritual business on our behalf, with us, through us, around us, for the sake of his kingdom and our future. His justice and mercy every day. What's the, again, the greatest business is, man, I messed up today. I go to that, that gate where Jesus is and he says, okay, give me your issue and take my grace. Remember, you're not a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner saved by grace. In me, you are going from glory to glory. You are saved. Remember, saved is that one time to be salvation is being saved or when I am saved and then being saved every day. Every day, you know, being renewed with his new mercies in the morning. Every day, covered by his loving arms and his blood that washes away our sins. Every day, my mind is renewed in, with his word, with the washing of his word. Every day. So I was saved and I am being saved. So when he says, at the beginning of this scripture, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. That's what he's talking about. His justice and his mercy. So Lord, I did just like what Pat opened up about today. Guess what? That's that business is over with because he did it. He went to the gate of the city. He went to Jesus. And now it's done. He's got a clean plate. He's been covered by the blood and received more than what he came in with. As each one of us are in the love of Jesus. Because we go through that gate. So the first thing that I said is, anyone who enters through Jesus, this door, this gate, will be saved. Spiritual salvation comes from that beautiful relationship the, with Jesus, the one who is at the gate, who is the door. Additionally, we're being saved by ourselves, from ourselves. As we enter his gate, we're going through his way. In him, we're not doing it by my strength, and in my power. Word of God said, not by power, nor by strength, but by my spirit. In going through his gate, in him, his door, in him, I'm operating from the place where Jesus is moving, where I am filled with the things of God, with that heavenly attitude, have kingdom mindset, kingdom spirit, his authority. I can go on and on about those things. And and when I say we are also saved from ourselves, we're also saved from the fact of who we are in him. Okay? I no longer a sinner. I am a child of God, loved by him. His arms seated in the heavenly realm. Yes, I heard that. <laughs> seated in the high places, next to Jesus in his throne room, at his right hand. We're co-heirs with Christ. Our identity is made clear through that door. Any other door I walk in, I lose that sense of identity because I'm trying to figure out who I am. When I go through that door, I know who I am because he tells me and shows me who I am. He makes it clear. There is no question of how I am defined in Jesus. Okay? There's no question who I am in Him. He clearly defines me as His son and His daughter. Anywhere, any other door, I'm going to question it, and we just need to look outside the church wall, so to speak, and you see the confusion that's taking place. Okay? In this world, I am defined by going through Him. He is my gate, He is my door. I realize my purpose, my calling, my, what I'm equipped with. I get, again, uh, Ephesians 1, 3, I, I, every spiritual blessing available to me. You know, it's, it's, it's like going into your spiritual toolbox, right? Like if you own a lot of tools, you more than likely never worry about not having the right tool for the job. So when I go in to that, my toolbox, I know exactly what I need. I have it right there. I grab it. That's in him as my door that's what I have available to me everything I need to do the job 
to succeed, not just do the job, but do it successfully. And you know what I've been doing lately? Never done that before till the last month. I go to mow the lawn. I ask the Lord for favor that my lawnmower works. And he gives me favor. When I start little home projects that I've been doing throughout the summer, because my history is this. I used to speak curse over myself where I would say, you know, this thing that should take five minutes is taking me five hours. This always happens to me. Nothing comes easy. I used to speak those words over myself. Now, I, before I even start a project, I go, Lord, would your favor follow me in this that I can do this swiftly and effectively and efficiently and correctly? And you know what? I've noticed a marked difference when I go through his door in achieving these tasks. Big difference when you stop cursing yourself and you go through his door. Big, big difference. Second thing Jesus says here, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, first says I will be saved. Second thing he says, you will go in and out and find pasture. So going in and out in the Bible, in and out. Is, what does that mean? It means I go into his presence, get what I need, and then in order to go back out into the world. In the Old Testament, you hear about David going in and out. You hear about different people going in and out. That's what it's a reference to. A few weeks ago, we talked about Joshua, right? He went into the tent, stayed in the presence of God. So when he came out, he had what he needed to do. Right? So it's a specific reference to going into the presence of God. And then when leaving the presence, you're leaving not the same person you walked in, but with what you need to succeed in life. So be, when we go into his presence, through this gate, we are encouraged, refreshed, strengthened, built up, equipped, prepared, rested. All those things, everything we need in Jesus is there. He is our sanctuary. I used to think I, I need to go back to my home and then shut out everything to be refreshed. That's not true. Yes, home is great for those things, but I need to go into my secret place, into the place where I meet Jesus. And then I can go back out and into the world. In the Bible, to go out is to be ready to conquer and face life in the world in the power of God after being re uh, refreshed and strengthened by Him. You know, that's what you do. You don't keep fighting the battle on your own, getting weary and tired. You go where Jesus is and you get, receive His strength. Never going to make it on my own strength. It's all going to be in Jesus' strength. That's why He says, I am the door. Who, who enters in me in or through me, in me or through me, is going to be able to go in and out. But here's the key thing. And you'll find pastures. In Deuteronomy 28, 6, he says this. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go, when you go out. Blessed you'll be coming in because you're going to get, rid of, get be able to dump the weight that is on you. The stress that's on you. The burdens that you have. And blessed you're going to be going out. Because you're going to go out lighter with what you need. With me. With more of me in you. Psalm 121 8 says, The Lord will guard your going out. And you're coming in. From this time. From uh, this time and forever. He will guide you. He will guard you. Why? Because that's your intention. That's your purpose. If my purpose is enter, to enter his presence through Christ, in Christ, he's going to honor that. He will never not honor my heart to enter his presence. Never. And he will never not honor me going out of his presence with what I need from him. He will never set me up to fail. I will walk out with what I need to succeed. And when he says finding pastures, he says you'll go in and out and find pasture. That's so important because pasture is in reference to peace, to rest, to that place where I can operate in life 
from that place of rest, right? Not a place of stress, of anxiety, of fear. It's that place where I be in his blessing, place where I will be strengthened to not be moved by the world or life or evil. That when I walk out of his presence, I'm sorry guys, but when we walk him out of his presence, and I'm not saying church, because you know, you can walk into church and walk out of church and not be in his presence, right? But when you walk out of his presence, whether it's in a communal setting like this, or in a private intimate time with Jesus, you should not be walking out and the first person that cuts you off in the driveway, you cuss him out. Because you've been just filled with something more that is greater, okay? I should have the grace on me to bless the person, not curse them when they do that. Because if I come out and I'm do cursing or you know, not behaving with that kingdom mindset, I need to get back in his presence. God wasn't done with me or I didn't do it my job. I kind of went through the motions instead of going in through the door, right? I've gone through the motions. We can go through the motions in church. We don't want to do that. Okay, we come here to be encouraged and edified by his spirit, by his love, and by one another in him, in his spirit. As I am filled with his spirit and his love and his grace, I'm releasing it to you. And you are releasing it to me. That's what it's about, right? To carry, as we go out, his specific spirit and power and authority and identity. Remember, royalty. We are royalty. We carry that out when we go out, right? When I walk out of his presence, I should not walk out as a pauper, lacking self-esteem and awareness of identity and who I am. I walk out with my held head high, knowing I'm a prince and co-heir with Christ in the kingdom of God. It's an attitude, not, not prideful, but an awareness, self-awareness, who I am in Christ, who is my door, right? It's a self-awareness that, yeah, made clear by the Holy Spirit, by my relationship with the loving Savior. Savior. And, it's a be, and to be at that place of peace and rest, that no matter what is going on in life, I'm, I, God's got this for me. He's got it. It's taken care of. I don't need to worry about it because God's handling it. That's why, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. We all know, I'm going to share with you these couple of verses. For I know the plans I have, that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for prosperity and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's going in. You're searching. You're going into the place where I am. And I will let myself be found from, by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I've driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. But he begins by saying, I know the plans I have for you. So don't walk away from my presence stressed up out about what's going to happen next. You operate from that place of rest because I am the door. Then the other thing, pasture, what does that mean? Think, when we think of pasture, we always think of Psalm 23, right? He makes me lie down in pastures of green grass, fields of green grass, whatever your version says. Listen what Psalm 23 says. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in need. Because I don't have to worry about being taken care of, he lets me lie down in green pastures. Let's look at it from that perspective. Because I know who's got my back, who I just went out from, the place I went out from. Because he is my door, my gate. Business was taken care of on a spiritual level. No matter what's still going on in my life, I can chill out in the green pastures. He lets me, remember that, He lets me lie down. He, in me, I can chill. 
I can relax. And he leads me beside quiet waters, a refreshing spirit, that cooling spirit that just flows over me. And he restores my soul. Remember, mind, will, and emotions in your soul. He restores my thought process, the way I perceive things. He restores my will, my, my drive, my desires. And he restores my emotions that I become passionate about. The important things. He helps me put everything in perspective. And then tell us about my favorite part of this goes on and says, he guides me in the paths of righteousness. That's paths of righteousness within chaos, right? He clears that path for me within chaos. Remember that chaos is still happening when this is taking place. The world is, hasn't changed, but I was in his presence because I went to, in Christ. I changed. I handled it differently, right? for his name's sake and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil for you are with me you are my rod and my staff and they comfort me You're, and this is it I, I always say that use this part because I just love the imagery you prepare a table where I can relax my stomach is in a knots I can enjoy a seven course meal prepared by my, the hands of my Savior on a table he set for me with the gold silver or, you know, the kind that your mom and dad used to only bring out for special occasions and the, and, and the gold rim plates with the finest china that you don't touch but maybe once a year. He prepares that table for me because I can dine in peace with him, in him because he is my door. See, he clearly says, the enemy seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy wants you in turmoil. He wants you to con be confused about your identity. He wants you to be confused about if God wants to touch your life, touch your mind, your will, your emotion, your, your, uh, your heart from the wounds of, of, of life, that inner healing, those chains that you've been wrapped around. He wants you to go in, in him, through his game, to be healed of those things. He wants to confuse you if God wants to heal you physically, if God wants to work in your life. There is no if. It's yes and amen. He does. When I am in the door, there is no doubt. When I am in that, that, that door and that gate, there is no question about what God has for me, what God wants for me, what his passionate desire is for me. It's to give me a future and a hope. He's already lined it up. Devil wants you to be hopeless. He does not have your best interest in it at heart. He says, came to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come, number one, to have, for you to have life, for you to live, live. And how do you live? You live in me, in my love. That's what John 3, 16 is all about. In my love, for God so loved you because you're in the world and I'm in the world. He, you cannot be saved more than you were already saved. He did everything possible. He saved us. And he is saving us. And he is redeeming us. And restoring us. And healing us. And strengthening us. And encouraging us. And renewing the hope we have every day when we are in him. But when we're not in him, we're getting confused with everything else. Everything else becomes a distraction. It takes that away from us. In Him, nothing can take you away from how much He loves you. Nothing. He does not change what He has for us or wants for us. We choose to position ourselves to say, yeah, I'm going in, Jesus. I'm going in you. I'm going in through you. I'm entering your gate, the gate, because of who you are. And he says, not only will you live, I have come that they may live. And he ends it by saying that they may have life, have it more abundantly. You may live life more abundantly. 
God doesn't want us to just survive. And I'm not talking about financial status. It's, a, it's about attitude in life. It's about your perception. It's about pressing into the things God has for us. Okay. And you can live that so much more than you ever thought you could. And I feel, what I'm feeling from Holy Spirit right now is some of us, what God wants us to realize is it's not about your circumstances, but how you're perceiving your circumstances. That you can actually enjoy your life in your circumstances based on your perception in Him, through His lens. Through His lens. Through His door. God will work the environment around us, but His primary goal is to work within us. Okay? That's his number one goal. Because if this in here and this in here changes with that kingdom heart mindset, everything out there is going to change. Why do I know this? Because my attitude's going to change, and where I go, I'm carrying him with me. Which is no question going to change some things in the environment shift some things in the environment. Who would have thought, Lord, I'm trying to fix my chicken coop. Give me favor to do this right swiftly. And he does. Whereas it would have taken me seven years before. Simple things shifting within us will shift everything from a spiritual Oh, my wife brought up earlier, the kingdom of God is at hand. That shift in perspective going in Jesus, through Jesus, will shift everything because it brings the kingdom of God here into perspective. It opens the door for his kingdom to come alive here. Enter into new life. And really, this new life is God's original purpose for our life. It's new life because it's something new to us. But what it is, is bringing us back to being who God originally wanted us to be all along. When he thought of Nicole, he, this is what he wants her to be all along. There might have been issues along the way. When he thought of Roberta, same thing. There might have been life things that have happened along the way. When he thought of me, same thing, life things. But it's what he had in mind from the get-go when he formed us in our mama's womb. Before he formed us in our mama's womb. And he thought of us. He knew what he wants for us. Would you stand with me? Just position yourself to receive right now. listening to the Holy Spirit. I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, move. Father, as a church, we repent for not entering in you, Jesus. Whether it's personally, in our daily life, or as a church, as a whole. We repent, Father. Thank you, Lord. We repent for that. Thank you for who we are in you. And thank you that your love really does never fail never gives up, never runs out. Thank you that you are faithful. And I just release right now, Father, that spirit of love over each one of us, your love and your hope that comes along with it. And I ask right now for in every mind, just release in the name of Jesus, a revelation of, re of identity. Remind us of who we are. Remind us of who we are, Lord, right now.
We are royalty. Lord, we just repent right now for settling and make and making statements about our lives that this is the best that it's going to be, that this is it, that it can't get any better. And we thank you, Lord, and we receive right now what you are releasing in the heavenlies, Lord God, that we know this is not the best, that the best is still yet to come as we you continue to grow in us. The best is yet to come. There is more. And we want it. Can we just tell him, Lord, we want more. Want more, Lord. More. 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 More, Lord. More. Anthony, I see the Holy Spirit all over you right now. So, Father, I just feel this more over Anthony. Right now, in the name of Jesus. More. 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 You need to sit down. Sit down, Anthony. More, Lord. More. 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 In the name of Jesus. Jeremy, you haven't even tapped into what God has for you. More, Lord. Just touch him right now. Just, just let those sparks go off in his mind and heart right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. Just, just pour your presence into him right now. More, Father. More, Lord. More, 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 more. Father, I just release a blessing over every parent here with, oh, with each, for each kid that is here right now and the kids that we have at home and grandkids. Then, Lord, we will speak words of life. You will give us specific words of life to speak into them so they will know they are more they are more that they and they will do better than what we are doing because they're going to grow what we have we're going to pour into them plus what you're going to do even more so father thank you for everything upon these children right now thank you lord god thank you for marcus and logan we thank you for Annalena and nathan lord and for Martha Ellen and Savannah and Julie and Kylie, Lord God, we thank you for Levi and Ollie, Lord God. We bless them that are here right now. We bless all the other kids that are not here, wherever they may be as well. Just give us as parents what we need to release more, and grandparents and aunts and uncles to release more into them. Right now, Father, more. Thank you. Thank you. 